Kia ora. Thanks very much for having us. Um, we've already been introduced, but Hamish Campbell, Jonathan Ball, we're both product managers at uh, Coordinates. Um, today, we're presenting State of Cart, uh, which is Coordinates' open source software project for the uh, for version control for geospatial data. Um, why did we build CART? It was simple, really. We, we needed it. Uh, Coordinates was in a unique position where we were uh, delivering sort of mature software engineering while also dealing with a lot of uh, geospatial data management. And we could see a clear problem. Um, the work that we were doing in software engineering was afforded a lot of tools that just simply weren't available in the, the data management space. So there was a need. Um, and we went about solving it for ourselves. Um, so, what is CART, really? Um, well, it, uh, it stores geospatial and tabular data in a Git repository, and it provides uh, version control on a metadata, row, and cell level. It uses standard Git repositories and Git-like CLI commands so if you're familiar with, with Git or uh, work in a CLI on a day-to-day -day basis, you're going to find it a pretty natural environment to work in. Um, it provides repository working copies with standard GIS formats inside them and allows you to directly edit those uh, data sets from any uh, common GIS software uh, without plugins, it says. But it's worth noting that we do also offer uh, some software plugins that allow you a, a bit of user interface if you want some, some help while you're using CART. How do I skip to slide? Get to there. Cool. All right. So before we go any further, I'm just going to talk a little bit about why version control is actually important for geospatial data. And Hamish is going to get into some of the details around, around CART. If you're from a large organization, you're probably used to talking about data governance. And if you're from a large organization, you probably view data governance as a small team of people that have a meeting semi-regularly. They'll probably have one spreadsheet and probably have very little to do with actual data. Um, what version control enables is actual transparency into the data set and transactional um, audit, auditability on a feature level. So this is like, this is practical or tactical uh, data governance. It really lets you see how a data set has been treated, what its life cycle has been like, and um, what the quality and, um, yeah, what the quality of the data set really is like. Um, second point, which is that uh, good science requires repeatable methodology. So geospatial has been selling itself for 15 years now. Uh, we've, we've finally got a seat at the decision-making table. Most large organizations will use geospatial data when making decisions. Um, when you get to that stage, you actually need to start, uh, raise the level of maturity around how you treat the data because there's going to be a point where people are going to come back and say, all right, we made a decision four years ago based on this data set, why did we do that? Well, that data set's actually gone now. Well, if you have proper version control wrapped around your data sets, you should be able to roll back to any stage in its life cycle. So version control allows you to roll back. Last but not least is it enables you to manage your data sets as an asset. Uh, version control gives you a similar Similar level of transactional transparency as a business ledger or a bank statement uh, does for financial assets. You wouldn't ask an accountant to do their job without access to zero or your business's bank statements. You wouldn't ask a software engineer to write you working software without the use of Git. But for some reason, with uh, geospatial data and the data science area, we just allow it to uh, well, we take it at face value. This data set must be fit for purpose, and I'm sure no one's tampered with it in its life. <laughs> but this is what version control begins to, to unravel. All right, I'll hand
hand over to you now. Um, yeah, so we weren't going to do a, a, a demo of some of the existing behavior, but we'll talk a little bit of what CART um, supports um, as of right now. Um, so um, again, um, CART is like Git for data and spatial data specifically. Um, you can use your choice of format, um, use the common GIS uh, data types. Um, we also support tabular data. So despite the fact that I was focusing on spatial data, um, you can also version control all your non-spatial data um, as well. Um, we'll talk about um, the new features specifically, which is raster and grid data and uh, um, point cloud or LAS data um, that we've just added. Um, good performance supports branching and merging, um, supports spatial filtering as well, which is a major feature of CART over just putting your data in Git, for example. Um, easy to synchronize your data and you can have multiple data sets in the repository. And if you wanted to learn more about that, you should have gone to my workshop. Um, um, we might do online workshops soon, and it'll be great if you are interested in that to come and talk to us because it'll be really good to gauge the uh, interest. All right, so point raster and point cloud data support. So that's our new thing. Um, just some principles that we're working on here is making some opinionated decisions. So we are lucky that we are both experts, I think, in software engineering um, and know a little bit about GIS uh, more than your average um, sort of software developer, um, you know, so we understand why most of the people in this room would, might find GeoJSON limiting as a working format day to day, whereas uh, a lot of web developers, um, that's sort of, that is GIS for them. Um, we're also trying to establish and evolve some best practices, um, but in an environment where we don't know what those best practices might um, ultimately look like. So we're making some guesses and, uh, um, and again, uh, we, we need to understand and evolve those over time and solving for some real world problems. Um, so hopefully you know what point cloud data is. Um, it's sort of what it says, a whole bunch of points in an area. Um, this is an example of a uh, uh, Motuhi Island out in the, out in the harbor. Um, it's quite a small data set um, and colorized with aerial imagery. A much pretty example with permission of Emory um, if you went to his talk about um, creating um, very, very nice maps out of um, point cloud data with um, Use some Blender and whatnot. So that's an example of a point cloud data set of, um, of downtown Auckland. So a whole bunch of points. And you can get this stuff at maphustle.co.nz. Um, so really quickly, um, a shared aspect around uh, raster and point cloud data is um, unlike vector data, where we have uh, uh, fields in rows or columns, um, and we're version controlling um, those individual features. Um, in the Rust point cloud environment, we're, we're version controlling files. Um, and those files can ultimately get very big. And so rather than storing them directly in the repository, we use Git LFS. Um, I tried to find a good sort of graphic that explains what Git LFS is. Um, because there are a few different ways of storing um, large files with a repository, but ultimately what it does is instead of storing the file, you store a pointer to the file. And the, file, the pointer says, okay, um, this file um, has you know, this hash which identifies it um, uh, uniquely, um, and you can fetch it um, from the LFS server, um, which sort of um, runs alongside the Git server. So they sort of go hand in hand. So Ruster and Point Cloud Data sits in these Git LFS um, storage buckets, as it were. So that's shared with the two different format types. Um, Point Cloud Data, we added support in version 0 0.12 um, at the beginning of this year. Uh, we support LAS versions uh, 1.2 onwards, so if you're a real um, Point Cloud tragic, you'll know that there's um, 1.1 is not very good, um, 1.2, 1.3 are okay, and 1.4 is, is kind of the standard um, that everyone should aspire to now. Um, and the record formats, um, uh, I'll say six, seven, eight. Um, there are a whole bunch of others, um, which we support to greater or lesser degrees, but we are limited by um, what PDEL supports. So um, CART now comes with PDEL under the hood, um, and um, you know, subsequent record formats include waveform data, which PDEL doesn't support, so we don't support it, and I don't know if many people um, outside of quite specialist applications use it. So, um, so those are the different record formats of um, LASB support. Um, you can provide 
LAS data, but we'll convert it to LAS 1.4 when, when you import it. So basically, there's a cart import command. So as for other data sets, you'd go cart import, and here's my uh, shapefile or geo package or whatever. Uh, with point cloud, you say cart import. Um, you say um, give it a list of tiles or a folder uh, full of tiles. Um, and cart will then import that data into the repository and start tracking it as LFS objects as a contiguous data set. Um, again, calling back to um, trying to establish some um, best practices, making some guesses about what those might look like. Um, we decided that we would encourage but not require conversion to cloud-optimized point clouds. Who knows what a cloud-optimized point cloud is? Got a couple of hands, cool. Right. Points that are optimized for cloud. Exactly, yeah. It's, nice. It's a, it's a real fun double inversion there. Um, what it is is the same data but reordered to be um, reordered in such a way that you can uh, host a very large file and extract parts of it via range requests. So if you know about um, uh, Cogtips, then it's sort of a similar concept. Um, so that you can get overviews um, of uh, very large files when you're zoomed out, and then you can get more focused views of the data when you zoom right in. Um, and if you're working with very large um, point clouds, uh, which you know, individu individual files can, can get extremely large, um, this makes it efficient to store and move around without changing the internal data itself. So it's rearranged, otherwise the same data. Um, and, you know, we're, we are experienced in cloud hosting of spatial data, and it made sense to us that uh, this is, um, you know, it doesn't modify the data itself. There's very little downside to encouraging this um, when it enables um, much better usage of it, not only of the, um, of the cloud, but also when using things like QDIS directly, which will also read cloud-optimized point clouds um, and gain the benefits of the same optimization by simply not having to read and store so much data internally. Um, so the, da the data set can contain any number of tiles. Um, the only real limitation is they must be homogenous, um, so it must have the same um, version, uh, record format. Um, you sort of have to pick if you want the COPSI or non-COPSI types. Um, obviously the same projection system as well. So um, a, a point cloud data set within a cart repository um, is essentially a folder of, um, of point cloud files that, that have the same schema at the end of the day. All right. Rasa data. So Rasa data, um, we added support in uh, version 0.1, 0.14. Um, so we've managed to go through three major versions this year, which is pretty neat. Um, much like point clouds, so we're making opinion, opinionated dis decision to store as geotiffs. Um, and just like with the point clouds, we encourage but don't require conversion to cogtiffs during the import process. Who knows what a cogtiff is? More hands, as expected, yeah. So just like the difference between a point, uh, non copsy point cloud and copsy point cloud, uh, a standard geotiff and a cogtiff. Um, there is um, a range arrangement and internal tiling of the data to make it easy to do requests to specific parts of the da data. Works a little bit different with point clouds. Um, it's a little bit more like the old geo uh, JPEG 2000 format where you you'd load the high level data and then load more data as you go in. Um, cogtiffs is more about loading um, tiles out of the individual, individual data set for different areas. Um, but again, um, if you want to, um, cart comes, batteries included with everything you need to convert your data to the geo, um, uh, JPEG, sorry, the cogtiff on the way in, uh, so that once it's in the repository, um, any tools that um, can use those features of the um, cart, of, cart optimized um, geotiff um, will gain those benefits too. Um, just like for the, um, the import um, syntax is more or less identical. Cart import, um, give it a um, data set um, title if you want, um, and then uh, you list all the tiles you want um, to include. Stored in LFS as well. Um, for both of them, if you want to modify, um, you can modify the files on the file system and commit those changes. Just like the Rusted um, Victor data changes, you can uh, check out different versions. You can roll back, roll forward, branch, merge, 
all of the same things that you can do with vector data, uh, you can do with the raster data, um, but you don't get that sort of internal file change that you might get with vector data. So all you know is that tile, uh, tile A um, had this data before and this data afterwards. Maybe someone could produce a really cool version control improvement for that project. Um, some things that we learned along the way. Um, extended asterisks for Git LFS protocols. So um, LFS um, works by storing that pointer to a file that lives elsewhere. And we went to the maintainer of that and said, hey, it'd be great if we could add more things to that pointer file that would enable us to do some of the spatial things we want to do with the file. Um, and this comes back to the like, why not just use Git? Um, for it to be useful to GIS people, we need to be able to do things like uh, checking out specific geospatial regions and extents. Um, and what we wanted to do was to get that extent information into the LFS pointer file. Um, we did come up with some resistance. Um, we've had to sort of um, do a bit of a nasty hack to, um, to make this possible um, by abusing the format a little bit. But it, we've managed to do it in a way that continues to support um, standard Git clients. So we've, go out of a, we've gone out of a way to make sure that we're not breaking the LFS pointer files um, for Git under the hood. But to get the spatial information that we need into the pointer files so that we can uh, index those files um, and do spatial filtering on clones on the other side. So what I mean is you can commit a very large data set of thousands of tiles into a cart repository. Uh, put it in a host somewhere, and someone else can say, I want to uh, cart clone that data, but only give me the University of Auckland. Sorry, the University of Technology. Um, and you will get that data, and you can continue to commit and make changes and uh, fetch changes, and that will continue to work. Uh, but you're working with a very small subset of the data. So that was one of the interesting challenges, and I hope maybe maybe we'll gain a bit more influence over, um, over a, a better way of doing that in the pointer files in the future. Um, and this, we, we believe that this way of doing things could be adapted by other types of um, indexes of large files. So it's not sort of a, something that should only be specific to us, but the maintainers are resistant to that change. Um, along the way, um, thanks to um, very um, attentive testing by our customers, um, we found and fixed a very subtle data corruption bug in PDEL's COPSI conversion. So if you've been converting a lot of data, uh, point cloud data to COPSI data, you might want to go and double check it. Um, uh, so that's, um, that's been uh, really interesting, working with um, uh, Fobu and the, um, uh, Howard and the uh, PDAL maintainers. We also contributed improvements to PDAL's network performance, uh, particularly around the COPSI format, which should be great for streaming over the internet, but we discovered that if we wanted to just look at the headers, um, we needed to, um, it was downloading the entire file, we wanted to improve it. I'm gonna skip this one. Um, so that's CART. You can get CART at cartproject.org, completely free and always will be open source. Um, here's a bunch of links. Um, it's at github uh, github.com slash coordinate slash CART. Um, oh, I'm missing a slide. I was gonna say, how can you contribute? We'd love people to use CART. Let us know that you're using CART. Uh, impress your friends and family by using CART. Um, if you are good at writing, please write tutorials about CART. Um, if you want to fix bugs in CART, that's even better. And if you want to add new features to it, it's open source. Uh, we'd love to have your uh, pull requests. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Hamish and Jonathan. That was really fantastic. I'm interested um, quickly, I, like I use Git a lot and I sort of understand a little bit of it. It, it magically gets diffs in text files and binary files, or text files especially, mm. and it merges them all together to come up with the latest one. Do you do that with your data that you're storing? Yeah, so CART teaches Git how to work with spatial data. So a CART repository is a Git repository under the hood, yep. um, and you can host it in places that you can otherwise host Git things. Um, and Git is really good at quickly assembling the changes between the state of a tree and two points in time. And so. What we've done is be able to teach it how to understand the row level changes of stuff. Yep. Um, and then let Git do the hard work around like marrying up the differences between the two data sets. So it means you can have lots and lots of history in some of our data sets. You know, we've got like nationwide Avesta going back 10 years of versions, I think it's every week. 
and you can say, okay, tell me everything that changed between this point in time and that point in time, and you'll get the diff in like various machine readable formats. Um, yeah. Thank you. But for the big stuff, the point cloud thing was cost. Mm. You'd be just storing one now and one then. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Questions from the audience? Niall. Ah. <laughs> I'm curious when you say it encourages but doesn't require like conversion to the cloud optimized format. Yeah. What does encourages mean? Is it just like something in the documentation that you're like, we suggest this, or is it deeper than that? Uh, when you import it, we, we prompt you. Yeah, so we say, hey, um, we recommend that you do this. You don't have to, yes or no. Um, it, it, it was an interesting discussion because you, we're sort of mindful that uh, we might end up doing a lot of processing. Um, it does change It does change your data. Um, not even if someone's data. Well, hopefully not. No, it makes a copy. Yeah, um, uh, and um, some people might, you know, it, it is sort of locking you into a decision moving forward as well. Um, so, yeah, so we are in your face about it. Hmm. Any other questions? But what about with the cloud native paradigm and not hmm. downloading data? Does that then sit outside of the whole version controlling data? Do you have any thoughts there? No, it's, it's very relevant. Um, so one slide that I sort of skipped over very quickly is some of our future thinking around um, how we work with large data stores that you already have, right? So if you've got, a, <laughs> we talked about pairing into the data lake, right? So organizations that have, you know, they've got a bunch of S3 buckets and they've piled data into it and then it's sitting there and if you know how to use AWS tooling, maybe you can access it. Um, but you don't really want to have to then move it somewhere else to make it accessible. Um, so something we're looking at is whether we can leverage LFS again to keep the data in the same place, but kind of um, wrap a cart repo on top of it. Okay. Um, and then you get things like being able to do a spatially filtered clone, um, at least in a read-only sense, yep. um, and have it um, uh, have it presented as a single data set within a cart repository that can can be sort of thought as as a separate thing, but the data doesn't actually move and reduplicate it and paid for again and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff so yeah great well um Alex. exciting nice oh, uh, we're out of time sorry i think we need to move on but you can talk mm -hmm. to these two fine gentlemen later thank you very much hamish and jonathan Thanks, Alex. Thanks.